Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kiana. And so today I'm bringing you an interview that I had a couple weeks ago with an FSA. So she has been working in the actuarial field for about six years. And of course she has her designation. So I thought it would be really interesting to ask her a couple questions, especially for new actuaries, as I'm coming to realize a lot of you are still in university trying to figure out what the whole industry is about. So things we're gonna touch on today is I guess what is an actuary skill sets of an actuary trends in the actuarial industry so we're going to touch on like erm data science actuaries in marketing actuaries in just different fields in general so if you guys are interested in that stick around and to kick things off i'm just gonna have v introduce herself so here we go uh hi everyone uh it's, it's my pleasure to be here today so I am uh, an actuary, fully qualified actuary. So I have a fellowship of the Society of Actuaries and a fellowship of the Canadian Institute of Actuaries. So I'm currently working in the risk management function in a life insurance company in Canada. And I also uh, do a lot, a lot of other things, uh, so that like photography business, also have a YouTube channel and do a lot of volunteering with a lot of uh, actual organizations. So as the years go by, the actuarial field becomes more and more popular. But since V has been in the field for a bit longer, I kind of wanted to start off and ask her how she hear about it, how she get involved, all of that kind of stuff. I was qualified as an actuary if, um, since 2014 with the Society of Actuaries where I got my FSA. And then 2015 uh, when I got the FCIA. So it's been, I guess, five, six years since then already um so yeah so mathematics has always been my favorite subject in school so when i researched on what to study for my undergraduate so i came upon like the university of waterloo and it was the only university that offered a bachelor of mathematics back then so it's not just like bachelor of science and a major in mathematics but like bachelor of mathematics right so that really draw my attention and so to my su surprise so like the school had a lot of math majors to choose from, which I didn't know previously. So when I research on each of the majors, I'm like, oh, actuarial science sounds interesting. And I recall reading somewhere that being an actuary is like being a math wizard in the business world. So perhaps like I like Harry Potter. So I really like the idea of like, oh, maybe I can become a math wizard as well. So that's how I decided to study math and business, the double degree program uh, from Waterloo and Wilfrid Laurier and major in actual science and finance. I then asked V literally the most popular question every actuary get is what are you? No one I know that's not an actuary knows what I really do. Even when I explain it to them, they don't know. So let's hear from an FSA, what is an actuary? So I would say my first like slogan would be actuary is like a mathematics uh, professional in the business world. Like what we do is really, if you look at the actuarial control cycle, it's really about defining the problems and then designing a solution using applications from mathematics, right? And from there, so our skill set is really like evaluating the likelihood of certain events. We are experts in managing uncertainty and risk and how we can design solutions that can help companies or society or like personal individual in order to minimize the adverse impact of those events. So those are what we do. So for me, it's really like in a way a wizard, but we don't use like crystal ball, but we actually use statistic or mathematic application for our work. So because V has been in the industry a bit longer than me, I'm not even in the industry, I kind of wanted to ask her about trends, trends that she's seen over the years, emerging trends. So let's hear what she had to say. So thanks for the question. So I will comment based on uh, my experiences as well as like uh, my volunteering for various education committees with the SOA and the CIA. So initially when I first learned about the profession, which was more than 15 years ago, um, so when I first heard about what actuary, actuaries do, it's mostly related to pricing and valuing insurance contracts or like pension plans, right? So even with the society of actuaries, like other tracks like investment or corporate finance and ERM were just newly developed when I first started. So overall, I have to say we as a profession have continued to evolve 
and expand our reach to relevant areas related to managing risk, right? To show what we can do as an actuary and how we can add values in this new area. So another thing has changed is the exam curriculum. As you can see, that we seem to add more and more exam over time. So like newer topics related to like predictive analytics or statistic modeling, like they were not there when I was writing the exam. But I would say like those are necessary in order to uh, help us to be equipped right, with the future, to keep up with like the current and future trends, because just, just like seeing the continuing development and advancement in technology, data, big data and everything, right? So like if you can see careers in data science have become very hard. And personally, I believe all actuaries are data scientists, but not all data scientists are actuaries because like we specialize in managing financial risk and our professions has been long enough that we developed like a very rigorous uh, education system to ensure an actuary is very well equipped with various relevant knowledge for this field. So our overall, I would say our professions like will continue to evolve and adapt to changes as we have been doing for years and years already. So we always need to update our knowledge and skill sets, uh, especially with new technologies. And also we have put more focus on developing the soft and the transferable skills. So uh, you can see the society actually introduced a competency framework that focusing on the more soft skill nature of our professions. So those will help the actuaries of the future to continue to be relevant in not just the traditional fields like insurance or pension, but also in like new and emerging fields. I think this is a good time to reference what V just said about actuaries working in marketing, data science, investments. V actually has a series on her channel where she interviews pricing actuaries, marketing actuaries, just different types of actuaries. So if you guys want more information about the individual types of actuaries, go to her channel and check it out. I will link it in the description. But to move on, the next question I asked V was about exams. She's an FSA, she's been through it. What was her hardest exam? I would say, personally, the hardest exam for myself are the ones I did not study for. <laughs> because, let's be honest, so like if you don't study, when you look at the exam paper and you read the exam question, everything will be hard, right? So. Beside that, like I would say the practice education course exam from the CIA is actually was the hardest for me. And personally, it's because um, I did not expect I had to study so much for it, like an FSA exam. Because like people were telling me that like, hey, it's an open book exam and you're supposed to know most of the material already from studying the FSA exam. So that was totally not true. For people like me who wrote the corporate finance and ERM track or like the investment track, like it was only relevant for people who did the more traditional track like the life or the value like life and health or pension tracks but uh, lucky for you guys like I, I don't think they require you to write this practice education course exam anymore so so you don't have to worry about it but yeah so i would say uh, so on the other hand so the exam that i prefer more is the one like i already built up good study habits right so like i feel more confident in uh, like studying and writing the exam and those was mostly the FSA exam. So also because like I chose the corporate finance and ERM track. So those are the topics that like I have more interest in compared to the traditional actual topics like life contingency. So I definitely uh, prefer those exam overall. When I asked the question, this is pretty much the answer I expected from her. An exam is going to be as hard as you make it. If you're prepared, it'll be easier, I guess. It's also nice that when you start working towards your FSA, you kind of get to tailor your route to your interests. So keeping on the topic of exams, I kind of wanted to ask V about work-life balance because she volunteers. She's obviously a full-time actuary. She runs a wedding photography business and she now does YouTube. So I kind of wanted to ask her the obvious question. How do you balance it all? I would say, um, there's no real work-life balance. There is work and there are other things. <laughs> and my MBA schooling had a motto, which was like, work, 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 play, play, play. So pretty much you work hard and you play hard, right? So I'm a strong believer that you can actually be more efficient and have a more satisfying life by doing multiple things. Because like, I remember there was like, uh, the last month before exam, I think that's like MFC, I was doing an extra computer science course on EDX 
And I was doing that like uh, just spend an hour in the morning studying that, and then the rest of the day I was studying for the MSC. Uh, MSC. So, but then it's actually helped me stay focused because I'm doing more multiple things. So I know like I can uh, prioritizing, and I feel like oh I don't have all the time to work, so I need to be very efficient when studying or when doing uh, focus on the task on hand. So I would say like you need to stay focused and prioritize things accordingly, right? So if you, for example, an FSA exam is every half a year. So at the beginning, it's not like you know your results right away from the previous exam. So you have one or two months that you can relax and then do other things like going on a trip or having personal projects, right? But once you already know like, okay, what exam I have to write next, then you, then I would set like the schedule weekly to ensure that I will study a little bit every day and pace myself out. So you want to study almost every day, but it is important to take a break and do other things, right? Which can actually help you recharge when you get back to your study. And volunteering can be one of those activities. Um, and from that, so during the last month before the exam, then I will stay like super focused on the exam. And I do not commit myself from doing anything else. It's just like, that is really my last stretch. Like I need to stay focused and I want to pass because I don't want to redo the exam for like studying or not for six months. But I have to say like, I wrote on the actual exams, I wrote the three CFA exams, and then I have my master, like different degrees and so on. Actual exams are the one that, even if you study hard, you still don't know if you're gonna pass. <laughs> so, so I think let's just be honest in that, that even if you study, sometimes you will fail and it is normal. It is okay to just uh, accept, like accept it and then know what you can change and work hard right to continue keep going on on the path because like in order to become an actuary you do need to sacrifice things in the short term but it is for the long-term benefit and that is where i think the balancing acts come in so what is important to you short and long term so like how can you still enjoy the current moments right like the short term but why still continue developing and working towards your long-term plan Last but not least, I had to ask her about advice for aspiring actuaries. Many of you are aspiring actuaries. I am an aspiring actuary. So here's what she had to say. Yeah. So the journey to become an actuary can be very long and challenging. So I would say that make sure you do your research first before committing. Just because like nowadays, I believe there are so many choices that one can choose if you are interested in math, data, or coding and like quantitative fields, right? So I do think career planning is not a straight line. So sometimes you just have to try out different fields to see if you like. And this is where like getting experience as a, a co-op or an intern is very valuable. And if, you, if you're if you not lucky to get those experiences, like definitely do the research, right? To talk to the people in the field or watch YouTube channel like you and mine, yours and mine, and then just do research to know what is the profession is about, right? And if you are determined to like pursue this path and give it a try, like I would say, really commit to it and just do not give up. Like I have not, like most of the people I know have failed the same at least once or like you fail getting a job at first or you fail something here and there, right? Like failures are not the end of the world. Like I think in order to become an actuary, we should get used to it. Like the main thing is like what you learn from those in order for you to be successful the next time, right? So life is long and short at the same time. So we we make a lot of decisions in life, right? Is that what importantly is like how you can just continue to develop yourself like for a better you. So last but not least, like being an actuary is not just about passing the same and then you're an actuary. Like you have to develop your soft skills alongside with your technical skill and have a good business mindset, right? So those will help you to become a well-rounded actuary and can become the leader of the future. Okay, so those were all the questions that I had for V. I really hope you guys enjoyed this interview. I hope you were able to take something away. Comment down below if you found this video helpful so I can know to make more of this, less of this, whatever it is. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not already, and I will see you guys in the next video.